friends, my name is Dolores and I am a fine artist and instructor residing in beautiful Kenya. I'll be giving lessons on how to paint simple objects like a still life and more challenging things like a portrait in charcoal, in oils, landscape painting and many more. Karibu to my channel! Jumbo, my friends! Today we're going to start a new chapter, portraiture. Have you ever asked yourself, why are you choosing to learn to draw and paint portraits? I've asked that myself too, because it's very challenging and many, many times I just wanted to quit. But I've learned that in my case, I like people very much. I like to meet people, to know what they're going through, to understand their feelings and to also hear what the message they have to give. So I hope that by learning and practicing hard, I can give you some tools, some elements that you can have portraiture as a passion for yourselves as well. Welcome. Before we get into the demonstration of portraits, both in charcoal and in oil, let me explain my goals for portraiture. I look for the likeness. It is a general goal, although not the only one. It can be achieved by drawing the sitter in different positions to get acquainted with her or his features, correct measurement of the features, understanding the anatomy of the face, connecting lines and by measuring the negative spaces, making sure we do not add years to the sitter by the way we work on the features. I also look for the personality, the mood, and maybe the trait or the work position the sitter has and even the message that person may want to give to others. The elements that I use to achieve my goal are 1. Getting to know your sitter, engage and make her or him feel at ease with you. Engage in a friendly relationship if possible. Gesture, clothing, lighting, background, color or setting, symbols you may want to add, and the use of excellent photos if live sitting is not possible. I'll give you some examples from the paintings I have done. Ernesto Costa. For this portrait of a child, his mother and I chose a white shirt, a simple one that will make us put our attention on his lively childish look and colors. The photo was taken in the morning in his backyard. It has a soft light. I took many pictures and this was the very best. Esther. For this portrait of the biblical queen of Persia, I had used every element possible to portray the dramatic moment she lived before she decided to pray and fast for a miracle. In the narrative, there is a sparrow singing at her window, which is a symbol of the providence of God in the Bible. This bird is reminding Esther that although she was powerless at the moment, even the smallest of creatures is under God's providence. The gesture in her hands and the look of her face is one of anxiety because, you see, she holds a paper in her hand and she has just learned that the king, her husband, is ordering the annihilation of her people, the Jewish people of the diaspora of Persia. The model was dressed in a beautiful silk shawl and I added a pearl necklace to give her a bit of the status she had. This painting was made from life. Florence. In this portrait of my friend and colleague, artist Florence Wangui, I had made a painting within a painting, having her focus on doing a charcoal drawing of the hands. Her face in profile is highlighted by the contrast of the white paper on the back. This was made from life. And in this portrait of Isaac, I wanted to let the viewer understand who this old and wise man is, his joyful and hard work spirit his love for God and neighbor. We went to his shamba, he dressed up as if he was going to work, and looked for a special light in which all of his personality will glow. Took many, many pictures and chose this one. It was a favorite of my 2018 show. Today, I'm going to be doing a charcoal portrait of Dorothy, and I want to show you three things that are very important. I want to show you how the light is going to give us the anatomy of the face. We have this special light coming here, so we'll have the light bouncing here, a little bit here and here. And we see a little triangle here, this is called a Rembrandt light, 
It is a very traditional light that has been used for centuries in portraits. And because I want to have the modeling of her face, and I need to have some light bouncing in this side of the face, I'm going to bring a white canvas closer, so if I get it very close, the light is reflecting in the darkest part of her face. So when I put that canvas very close, that special light is coming and I like it very much. Here with these photos, a color photo and a white and black photo, I can help you understand better how the lighting gives us the right tonal values that come from the lightest light to the darkest dark with a few medium tones in the middle. These are the materials that I'll be using my very homemade viewfinder that will help me decide how much of her body I'll be drawing. Need an eraser, these very soft brushes that will help me blend in the charcoal. Charcoal, different shapes and tones. This white pencil, fixative for later. And sometimes I'm going to need to do a small details that I can put my hand over the paper. I'm not going to mess the charcoal. Then I will be using a wrapping paper, also called sugar paper. It's a very cheap one. You can get another one, a finer one if you need. But this is very good for this experience. So this is enough for now. Now let's get started. This is the fun part.
The last step will be to spray a fixative, a special fixative for charcoal or pencil. Make sure you do it outside because it's very toxic. And let it dry. That will keep your charcoal or your pencil from being uh, completely ruined when you touch it. Thanks for watching. Remember to check the description box below. And if you find this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to my channel. Wajeri!